good morning my dear students welcome to the discussion of the subject engineering mechanics under engineering mechanics we are discussing now solving a problem on resultant of concurrent force system this is the third solved problem we are discussing under resultant of concurrent force system now we will enter into the problem the given problem is three ropes are tied to a small metal ring at the end of each rope three students are pulling each trying to move the ring in their direction if we look down from above the forces and directions they are applying are shown in figure find the net force on the ring due to the three applied forces this is the metal ring and three students are pulling the metal ring with the help of ropes in their directions the first student is pulling the metal ring with the help of the rope in this direction with a force of 30 newton and this rope is making an angle 37 degrees with the x axis second student is pulling the metal ring with the help of the rope in this direction with a force of 15 newton and the rope is making an angle 45 degrees with the x axis then third student is pulling the metal ring with the help of the rope in this direction with a force of 18 newton and this rope is making an angle 60 degrees to the x axis our object is to find the net effective force acting on the ring in order to find the net effective force acting on the metal ring we are considering the two steps the first step is finding the components of the forces that is we need to find the horizontal as well as vertical components for the forces say 30 newton 50 newton and 18 newton after that we'll move to the second step in the second step we'll find the magnitude as well as direction of the resultant of the forces that is the direction as well as magnitude of the net effective force acting on the metal ring is to be calculated now we'll move towards step one in the case of step one we'll resolve the given forces say 30 newton force which is making an angle 37 degrees with the x-axis 50 newton force which is making an angle 45 degrees with the x axis 80 newton force which is making an angle 60 degrees with the x axis and all these three forces are outward forces and then here we are considering rightward as well as upward forces as positive leftward as well as downward forces as negative now we will resolve the given forces say 30 newton force 50 newton force 80 newton force into their horizontal as well as vertical components first we'll resolve 30 newton force here this 30 newton force say f1 is making an angle 37 degrees with the x-axis so its horizontal component becomes 30 cos 37 degrees then vertical component becomes 30 sin 37 degrees. Then we we'll resolve 50 Newton force into horizontal as well as vertical component. This 50 Newton force is making an angle 45 degrees with the x axis. So the horizontal component becomes 50 cos 45 because the component is traveling towards left hand direction that's why it is negative this is 50 newton force and it is making an angle 45 degrees to the horizontal that is x axis then the horizontal component becomes 50 cos 45 degrees because the component is moving towards horizontally left over direction that's why it is negative that is minus 50 cos 45 then vertical component here the vertical component is acting vertically upwards that's why it is positive so the vertical component becomes 50 sin 45 then we'll find the components for the 18 newton force 
the 18 newton force is making an angle 60 degrees with the x axis and then this force is outward force so the components are also outwards from the body here this is 18 newton force horizontal component is traveling horizontally in upward direction vertical component is traveling vertically downward direction the horizontal component becomes 80 cos 60 degrees that is minus value because it is traveling horizontally leftward direction and vertical component becomes 80 sin 60 degrees because it is vertically downward direction that's why it is minus 80 sin 60 degrees after that we will find the summation of horizontal components as well as summation of vertical components this is 30 cos 37 degrees and this one 30 sin 37 degrees this one 50 sin 45 degrees 50 cos 45 degrees because it is leftward direction that's why minus here 80 cos 60 degrees because it is leftward direction horizontally that's why it is minus 80 sin 60 degrees because it is vertically downward direction that's why it is minus then we will find the summation of horizontal as well as vertical components first we find the summation of horizontal component that is sigma f of x sigma f of x is equal to f x1 plus f x2 plus f x3 here f x1 is 30 cos 37 degrees f x2 is minus 50 cos 45 degrees f x3 is minus 80 cos 60 degrees substitute these values in this equation after that we will get sigma f of x is equal to minus 51.40 newton then we will move towards finding the summation of vertical components of forces that is sigma f of y is equal to sigma f of y that is summation of vertical components is equal to f y1 plus f y2 plus f y3 that is first force vertical component second force vertical component third force vertical component then f y1 is equal to 30 sin 37 degrees f y2 is equal to 50 sin 45 degrees f y3 is equal to minus 80 sin 60 degrees substitute these values in this equation then sigma f of y is equal to 30 sin 37 degrees plus 50 sin 45 degrees minus 80 sin 60 degrees after simplifying this we will get sigma f of y is equal to minus 15.87 newton with this we completed first step then we will move towards second step that is finding the direction as well as magnitude of the resultant force that is in the second step we are finding the magnitude as well as direction of the resultant force in the first step we calculated summation of the horizontal component that is sigma f of x is equal to minus 51.40 newton and summation of the vertical components of the forces that is sigma f of y is equal to minus 15.87 newton then the magnitude of the resultant force r is equal to square root of sigma f of x square plus sigma f of y square here sigma f of x is equal to minus 51.40 and sigma f of y is equal to minus 15.87 after substituting these values in this equation then r is equal to square root of minus 51.40 square plus minus of 15.87 square after simplifying this we will get resultant force value as 53.79 newton that is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the metal ring is equal to 53.79 newton then we will find the 
direction of the resultant force. For finding the resultant force direction that is theta, then we we'll use the formula tan theta is equal to sigma f of y by sigma f of x. That is, we need to find the direction of the resultant force that is theta. Then tan theta is equal to sigma f of y by sigma f of x. Here, sigma f of y is equal to minus 15.87 and sigma f of x is equal to minus 51.40. After that, we will get tan theta is equal to 0 0.3087. Then theta is equal to 17.16 degrees. Here, sigma f of y as well as sigma f of x are negative. That means the resultant force is acting in the third quadrant. So, the magnitude of the resultant force is 53.79 degrees and it is making an angle 17.16 degrees with the x axis in the third quadrant. f of x as well as f of y are negative. The resultant force acts in the third quadrant. Then the magnitude of the resultant force system is equal to 53.79 Newton and direction of the resultant force theta is equal to 17.16 degrees with the x axis. Here the resultant force is acting in the third quadrant. The magnitude value is 53.79 Newton and it is making an angle 17.16 degrees with the x-axis. That's about the solution for the given problem. If you have any doubts or queries to write it down below comment section, I will be very happy to answer it. Visit again for more videos on engineering mechanics using the links provided under the description of this video. Keep learning and knowledge sharing. Stay blessed. Thank you.